because one of the things, first of all, I was obviously extremely excited to be chosen for the role of Shredder. Uh, but there was obviously, the second later, go, knowing how many people who had inhabited that, that iconic role, I was like, okay, I got two choices. I can either go and listen to what they did, or having a vague memory of what they've done, go back in and say, let me take a look at who Shredder is. Take a look at what his, 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 the skill that he's used to train as a martial artist. Look at the Bushido code. And then look at him from an emotional standpoint and let those things drive a whole, drive what I put to the character, which hopefully holds up. So it was kind of like, I just wanted to be very cognizant that I wasn't doing um, a, a bad impersonation of somebody else because that you know it's like you go to a great barbecue spot and then you got somebody who'd be like yo I can cook like they can you'd be like no you can't because you take one bite and you know and so it's the same sort of thing where I was like let me make sure the character behind the mask is the thing that drives it not the sonic aspect of his voice shaping the words which is kind of empty so that's what uh, you know that's what I hopefully brought to the character and you said you had memories growing up, so were you, had you been a big Turtles fan? Is that, am I, is a silly question for a certain generation. Was everybody a Turtles fan? Well, I'm older than I'm, well, I'm hopefully, I'm taking it, I was actually, I should take that back. <laughs> I'm an old ass individual, okay? I'm, I'm old. So I do remember a lot of, um, a lot of, I remember the introduction of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So when I, you know, I remember reading it and thinking, the first thing, like reading a couple of the issues, because a friend of mine had them, and he was like, yo, you gotta read this. I was like, oh, so you're back to like early 80s. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I was, was like, black and white. I was, yeah, with the orange covers and the yeah, whole yeah, bit, yeah. and I was like, what the hell is that? Like, it made no, it made sense, but it made no sense. But it's one of those things, because it was so off the beaten path, that that's what made it fun, because there was that element of, of it not taking itself so seriously. It was, that was the thing that was so, that was a lot of fun. Because, you know, obviously if you look at, you know, the X-Men and the Avengers and a whole bunch of Batman and, you know, all the other DC properties and stuff, everything took itself very seriously. And here are three anthropomorphic speaking turtles that are martial arts masters. It's like, it requires a bit of suspension of disbelief to go, okay, I'm, I'm in, I'll buy it, I'm there, let me see what you got. And so, yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. And that was fun. That's what I remember. The most fun was kind of letting go of, of the world needing to be so utterly serious. That's what I, I loved about it. You were actually in the 2012 cartoon as one of the Purple Dragons. Yes, that's right. So I guess I'm curious, did you audition for Shredder for that? And not what's it like going from, say, minor supporting characters to the premier bad guy turtle? No, I actually didn't audition for Shredder on that go-round. That was, uh, the Purple Dragons uh, came in very early on, as you know. Um, and Andre Romano, who, legendary, legendary, legendary voice director, um, was very fortunate to be chosen by her to play Fong and to have a lot of fun doing that. But when it came time for what they wanted out of Shredder, it was like, they were like, okay, well, this is what we want. And so... I think it was more if they just picked some, if they picked the individual who ended up being Shredder, which I totally understand, um, because again, the world had already been established, unlike the movie, which kind of goes bam, and it's like, this is a, a, like a one-off premise of what's going on. With the series, it was like there was a longer narrative that was being extrapolated over time. You know what I mean? So that was kind of, I think, where it went with that. But I was very fortunate to get the, the copy for for Shredder and, like I said, ecstatic when I was chosen for that. That was a real honor. Uh, that's a great question. I was, when I was married, my wife, uh, Vanessa Marshall, who's done tons and tons of stuff, um, my first career was as a hip hop artist. So, and I built studios and, you know, engineered and done everything. Like sound is, that's what I do, that's what my thing is. So the music industry was doing what the music industry did, which was tank, and then they, she said, well, why don't you take some voice acting lessons? You know, just try it. And I'm like, I don't have any experience with it. She said, just go, 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 go. So I took the lessons, 
I uh, took about a year and a half's worth of lessons because I wanted to make sure that I was actually, you know, I didn't want to be like one of those people who's like, I took one lesson, it's like, okay, I'm ready to go. It's like, you want to know what you're doing. And by 2003, I was signed to CESD, my agency, and then that's all I've been doing ever since. So, yeah, it was a, it was a short hop from the music industry, which was a, I was extremely grateful for. Prior to, no. It was one of those ones that I had heard about, but I hadn't read. So then I had to kind of go back and go, okay, that, and then just... As it all unfolds, it's like, this is, is swearing allowed here? Sure. Okay, I'm just clearing it. I was like, this is wild shit. Like, this is crazy. I was like, this is bananas. But again, that's what made it so fun because it's the intersection of so many different things that it has that element going back to it. It doesn't, it's, it's not quite so, so stoic. It, there's a lot of fluidity and things like what the turtles represent is they, they basically stretch Batman's world out into this place where he's not used to being anything except being this impassive faced dispenser of justice they force his hand into being somebody where it's like okay okay I got a smile out of you type of thing and that's who they are which is, it's, it's a fun it's, it's always a fun excursion to, to do that No, I mean, Wes Gleason, who directed it, um, he basically said, what do you think? And I was like, and I just started speaking as Shredder to him. And um, he was like, yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of where we want it. Because again, like to what your earlier thing was, it was like, infuse, the earlier question was, it was ensuring that you infuse the character with that level of emotional like rage. That's what's gonna make him who he is. Otherwise, it's just a sound. So, yeah, very, very grateful for that. Hold on, I'm getting this yeah, out. Yes, sir. It was a pleasure meeting all of you. Great seeing you.